Hey there, and welcome back to another Miraculous Ladybug Season 5 review. And yeah, there's a lot of episodes out, and I've definitely fallen behind, but oh well. Only thing for it's to get cracking, I suppose. And yeah, the episodes did come out out of order, but I think I'm just going to do things chronologically here. Anyway though, today we'll be talking about Episode 5, Illusion, which bridges the gap between the episode where Ladybug and Cat Noir had that big moment where they had a joint vision of them being together, and Episode 6, which suddenly had Adrian being in love with Marinette, and Marinette being in love with Cat Noir. So, I guess this is where they need to show off why that happens. I mean, yeah, I know in Episode 6 of the Wax Museum, they say that Adrian's whole thing stems from the time that she nearly kissed him in the cringiest scene of all time, and I guess Ladybug has been warming up to Cat Noir since it's just been the two of them, but still, I think they needed to have that defining, oh shit moment, where it really kicks off their story. But, uh, hint hint, that does not happen. Oh well. The writing's been otherwise quite decent this season, so I can easily get past that. But with all that being said, let's jump into the review. So we start off the episode with a little bit of a vox pop, where various different minor characters are being interviewed and asked about their opinions on Ladybug and Cat Noir. And obviously, the majority consensus here is that the people are firmly behind the heroes, with only a few people, like Chloe, really providing that dissenting opinion. And honestly, this was clearly just here to pad out the runtime. But regardless, I enjoyed it. There were a couple of funny moments, I suppose, even if it was very filler, before we move over to a panel show, headed up by the only newsreader in Paris, apparently. Seriously. She does the studio news, the on-location reporting, sit-down interviews, and now panel opinion shows, apparently. Is there anything she doesn't do? And really, are these the people she's chosen as her lauded experts? Experts on what? <laughs> Why is the banana guy here? What news channel is this? And she doesn't even seem shocked at none of them actually answering any of her questions. It's like, this is what she expected. Alex spouts off about the power of positivity, Bob talks about his son's new album, and then the banana contributes actually nothing at all. He just says, stay peachy. Like, what? I think I'd be akumatized if I had to sit down through this show. How does it even have the ratings to stay on air? They didn't even discuss anything at all. Ugh. Meanwhile, we move on to Adrian's bedroom, where Plagues managed to get the Alliance ring to have its avatar of Adrian read out fake facts about various types of cheeses to give him his own sort of ASMR therapy. And rightfully, Adrian is creeped out by this. Because if you can get him to say these lies about cheese, imagine, just imagine for a moment, what his really creepy hardcore fans are getting him to say to them. And so he rages a little bit, he snatches back the ring and goes off to confront his father, who according to Natalie, is in the kitchen, making breakfast and insisting that Adrian calls him papa, instead of father and even tells him that he's actually going to accompany Adrian to school today to attend his parent-teacher conference in person. They make pancakes, they make soft-boiled eggs, and it's all very sweet. And yet despite this, it's also completely and utterly unnerving, as this is just so alien compared to what we've seen from Gabe before. Honestly, it just feels like you're staring at him the whole episode just waiting for him to snap. And also, it's clear that the old abusive Gabe still remains under the surface. Dad... I don't like that the Alliance rings use me as a model, it creeps me out. Oh, well maybe we should go back to doing things how they were before then, huh? Huh? No? Didn't think so, mate. What a loving and caring father he is. Also, side note about his personality shift, I know this is a kid's show, but if this was real, I guarantee you Adrian's first thoughts are, oh shit, my dad's on drugs now. He's just so absurdly upbeat and happy. Also, why do they keep insisting on saying his mum disappeared? Isn't it common knowledge that she's dead? Didn't they have a funeral? If she actually disappeared, why wouldn't it be more of a story? The wife of a famous fashion designer disappears is crazy big news. Especially since, considering the weird timeline, it doesn't seem to have been that long since then. But whatever, we'll just move past it. And also, after this, a tiny fleck of oil flicks onto Gabe's clothes from the fry pan, and so, enraged, he lifts the pan in such a way that if there was actually any hot oil in the pan, it would have spilled over Adrian's face. Ah yes. Whether he is nice or mean, Gabe will always and forever be a smooth brain. Good thing he's wrapped up his modelling career because his face has just been permanently scarred. Woof! But away from the smooth brain, back to slightly wholesome territory. That little wink he gives Adrian when they're cooking the eggs. Oh, it's very cute. I'm sad now, why isn't this their permanent relationship? We follow this up with what's actually a pretty cool scene where we see Alia and Marinette getting ready for school over FaceTime and discussing how they think that Monarch's managing to give each of his villains miraculouses and yet take them back just as Ladybug and Cat Noir defeat them. 
And honestly, we don't really learn much from this scene, but it looked very cool. Quite cinematic, like they actually thought outside the box for how they wanted this to play out, which I did appreciate. More of this type of cool stuff, thanks. It makes the show more dynamic and fun. But anyway, they arrive at school and meet up with Nino, who during the course of the morning class, informs his friends that he intends to keep helping out Ladybug and Cat Noir even though he doesn't have a Miraculous anymore, by forming his own little resistance organisation. And so, he instantly inducts Adrian as the first member of the resistance as Comrade Mayonnaise, whilst he takes the moniker of Comrade Ketchup. Already loving this. Nino has got to be one of the wackiest characters of all, and I'm all here for it. And later on, Nino, Adrian, Marinette, and Alia make their way to the cafeteria, where Nino's intending to reveal his secret plans for the Resistance, although, in the meantime, he's surprised that Adrian's even allowed to come with them, as apparently he'd been previously banned from eating cafeteria food by his father. Anyway, the food they serve looks pretty bad. A very generic salad, and I don't know, is that boiled eggs? Is this deconstructed deviled eggs? Because if it is, that's a lot of paste. Or is that thing on the side a meringue, or mashed potato? What's going on with this place? I'm so confused, is this a normal dish to serve? Am I the one who's out of the loop? Weird. And then we get some cute Adrian flirting moments where he talks to Marinette about how since his dad made the alliance ring, he doesn't have to model anymore, which lets him spend time with his father, his friends. Marinette gives her the side eye there, and she blushes, and it's all very sweet. And that's pretty much the last of their build up to their romance until next episode, so... Yeah, that's fine. It's still a little sudden, but at least there was something to hint for things to come. Anyway, they all sit down to eat. Adrian rejects Chloe, who then calls him a loser. And hey, some character development for Chloe. She's even willing to be mean to Adrian now when she doesn't get her way. That's something, I suppose. But regardless, after getting clowned on by Alia for giving them source names and acting like they're at a top secret meeting, Nina reveals to the group that he and Alia used to be superheroes. But it's all good now, because they don't have any miraculouses to steal, so they can talk about it to anyone. Although, humorously, everybody around the table already knew that Alia and Nino were heroes anyway, as Nino had already spilled the beans to Adrian during Rocketeer, and obviously, Alia and Marinette know. But side note, Nino really needs to work on the whole secret identity thing. The point is that it remains a secret. Stop spilling the beans, mate. <sighs> but anyway, after Marinette makes her displeasure known about this turn of events, Lila arrives and notices that Adrian's eating at the table. But of course, Marinette freaks out and refuses to let her sit with them in the empty seat. And now, I've seen people say that it's weird that Alia always seems to side against Marinette with the Lila thing, and calling her a bad friend in the wake of this episode. But come on. Is this really fair? Look at this from Alia's point of view. From her perspective, Marinette is very, very crazy when it comes to Adrian. Like, very crazy. Top tier psycho. Alia still loves and accepts her friend. But that doesn't change the fact that she knows that Marinette is not a very rational person at the best of times. She doesn't use her head, and thus she can't always be trusted with her point of view, especially towards other girls who are interested in Adrian. Plus, Lyle is also a manipulator. If none of her manipulations worked, she'd be such a boring character, and would really have no narrative purpose. So anyway, Lila goes and sits a bit away from them, and then uses her alliance ring to take a photo of Adrian and post it on social media, trying to attract the horde of Adrian's fans. And all the while, Nino spouts off his plan. He's realised that the major problem Ladybug and Cat Noir are facing is that they don't have the rest of the Miraculouses, and yet they're unable to get the Miraculouses back from defeated villains, despite these villains having powers. And so, whilst it seems like they might be able to deal out short-term solutions, they can't get to the root of the problem. And thus, Nino proposes that the four of them do some recon and purposefully get somebody akumatized to see what happens. Nino, he's suddenly so based. Because it's so true, this plan is actually great. Especially since the victim won't even remember it anyway, and Ladybug can fix the damage. From a completely pragmatic and cold perspective, it makes so much sense. And Marinette even agrees with the plan. <laughs> Although, Alia and Adrian at least are not completely and utterly morally bankrupt just yet, and so they resist the plan. And then, the fanboys arrive. And honestly, this whole scene where the fanboys try to rush Adrian in the cafeteria it doesn't even make any sense. How the hell are they even here? Surely if he's that famous, to have creepy dudes follow him around with no sense of boundaries, they would already know where he goes to school, so why is he not swarmed at all hours of the day? Also, these freaks need to get a grip. Poor dude just wants to eat his salad in peace. They seriously gonna charge him like creepers? Right now? Right in front of his salad? I think not. And so they sprint away, 
followed closely by Lila as she too is an absolute creeper. Anyway, they hide in the creepy murder basement where Nino set up pictures of all the various different parents of the kids like he's a serial killer. And then, after kind of putting his foot in his mouth, making Adrian feel like his dad's just faking being nice to sell the Alliance ring, Nino suggests they team up to get Gabe akumatized of all people because he seems like an easy target to make upset. And that just seems like a truly, truly terrible idea to provoke a dude that has a history of overreacting and who for the entire time you've known him has made Adrian's home life difficult. But there you go. Smooth brains all around. You get a smooth brain. You get a smooth brain. Everybody gets a smooth brain. And so, since they obviously somehow didn't hear her come in, Lila overhears all of this. And thus, when Gabe arrives at the school, she's able to tell him that he's the target. Although that scene definitely felt like it had a massive double meaning of her knowing that he's actually Monarch, and was kind of actually trying to power move him a little bit. You know, keep him on his toes and all that. And so then, the parent-teacher conference begins, and for once in his life, Gabe is kind. He's charming. He's involved as a parent. Maybe he has turned over a new leaf, they must be thinking. What a refreshing change. And then Marinette arrives to ruin it by dropping pizza on him. And then Adrian comes in and drops spaghetti on him. And then Alia just straight up attacks him with a chocolate cake in the least convincing accident of all time. And honestly, I still have no idea why they'd choose Gabe of all people to dunk on like this. Especially when it could have such bad consequences for them. But sure. Good one, guys. Let's just ruin Adrian's life by antagonizing a man who's well known for his overreactions. What could go wrong? Adrian won't have any bad consequences to face, would he? Well, wrong, because since Gabe is out scheming the schemers, he goes along with everything and pretends to massively overreact and immediately disenrolls Adrian from the school and takes him home, leaving our heroes feeling like idiots. And it's like, yeah, no shit, what did you think was gonna happen? Or at least Nino and Marinette feel like that, whilst Ali is very much in the camp of, I told you so, I knew this would happen. And so, she leads a little coup of the resistance and becomes the new leader, and takes the comrades to try and apologise to Gabe, and prevent Adrian's life from being ruined. And yeah, his life is kind of ruined. Adrian's no longer allowed to call him Papa, and it's back to Father, and it's back to getting shut up in his room all day. Whew, well, it was fun while it lasted. All that half day of it. But Gabe isn't quite finished. Because in his evil lair, he's transformed and used the power of the fox to create a fake Gabe. Which he is going to akumatize. And so his fake double cries out to Emily about how he's trying to be a better father, but failing in every respect, and is just raging quite hard. Obviously to try and get Adrian's attention, so he'll try to film it for his little resistance group to throw them off the scent. And of course, Big Brain Gabe's plan works quite well. I know, that sentence feels like an oxymoron, but it's true. Gabriel aggressed? Intelligent plan? What are the chances? But yes, Adrian films the fake Gabe getting akumatized into Collector, who loudly talks about how he's been given the power of the horse. And so Adrian runs off to transform so he can fight the Collector, and Marinette does the same, whilst Alia and Nino run for their lives. And honestly though, if this wasn't an illusion, Nino definitely deserves to get chased down by this guy. That pristine white suit? That beautiful white suit? Ruined by chocolate and tomato sauce? An absolute travesty. Justice for Gabe! Death to Nino! Anyway, as usual, our heroes battle the villain, but they can't land a hit for obvious reasons, whilst Nino and Alia analyse the footage. And in the meantime, Monarch actually creates a really good plan, and he unites a bunch of Miraculouses to set up a super sneak attack. He uses the horse, obviously, to teleport into the sewers, and also to teleport them into the sewers later. And on top of that, he uses the bee, the mouse, and the rooster to make himself invisible, small, and to be able to paralyze them, on top of also having the butterfly and the fox, as I mentioned before. So off screen, somehow he's learned to control five Miraculouses at once, in like an episode. Sure, that doesn't very much feel earned at all, but okay, I'll move on. But anyway, he plans out this crazy, impossible to block sneak attack. But guess what? As usual, Cat Noir gets got. It looks like it's over. Ladybug has no chance. But of course, Ladybug's plot armor comes into play, and poor old Gabe gets cheaped out of the victory. Seriously, what the hell? This plot armor is intense. It's like, why would you make him have such a good plan if you're going to have him lose instantly in the cheapest way possible? I mean, imagine. Imagine getting defeated by shredded cheese. Oh, the humanity. How do you come back from that? It's time to retire. Anyway, we finish off the episode with Gabe apologizing to Adrian, Nino apologizing to Gabe, they shake hands, and Gabe joins the resistance against Monarch, which... Gave me a bit of a giggle. 
Also, the audacity, the absolute audacity of Ladybug to dare to tell off Nino for being reckless when she, as Marinette, had completely and utterly endorsed his terrible plan. Very two-faced indeed. And yeah, after Gabe smirks to himself and laughs with Kagami's mum about how he bamboozled the heroes, we see that Nino has roped the whole class into the resistance, including Lila. Which of course makes Marinette's blood boil, and ensures that this is likely the last useful thing the resistance does, as she'll just sabotage everything. And so, that's the end of the episode. Fairly decent, although I really, really hated that plot armoured ending. But as always, these are just my opinions, and now I'd like to hear yours. What did you think of the episode? Do you like it? Hate it? I'm curious for your thoughts, so make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and let me know.